Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and today I wanted to make a video that features what your fall sown poppies should look like. Now I realize I have a lot of new subscribers because of my poppy growing obsession and I'm hoping this video will be helpful for all of you so that you can identify what your poppies look like and at which stage they're in so that you'll have the most successful poppy growing experience ever. Now I've been growing poppies for 20 years now. I learned this technique from my first boss, Nancy Goodwin, owner of Montrose Gardens in Hillsboro, North Carolina. And this technique was really all about engaging the ground plane in a really beautiful dynamic way that was inexpensive, helped produce weeds, and didn't require really any hands-on maintenance. And that's very much what my gardening ethic is all about. Um, you know, I have a lot of property that is fully gardened and I don't necessarily have time to be out micromanaging all of these spaces. And so the idea of growing direct from seed, meaning you sow the seed right in place and then you walk away and let it do its own thing, is really all about just a, a, a cost and time savings. It's a, a great way to garden um, where you don't have to do so much work. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. The additional benefit is that you get to have these really dynamic, incredible displays because you're just, you know, scattering seeds in massive beds, allowing it to grow and germinate. And then as it, you know, comes to fruition in the spring, you'll have something that could never be achieved if you were trying to plant. Now, really important thing about poppies, they do not transplant. So you can't actually start them in trays and then plant them in the ground. They develop tap roots. They are very specific in that they have to be direct sown. And I've said this over and over again in all of my videos about sowing them, but poppy seeds need light to germinate. So when you sow them, you can't rake them, you can't mulch over the bed, you can't walk in the bed. Once you sow the poppies, you just leave them alone. And they typically germinate somewhere between 15 and 20 days. Um, in the southeast, which is where I live, I live in Zone 7, Central North Carolina. I'm 18 miles directly south of downtown Raleigh. We have to sow these in the fall and then they grow all winter. They will start blooming like April, May, and then when we get really hot in June, they die. And that is the cycle that you really kind of have to follow for zones six through, I'm gonna say six through eight. I've never lived in zone nine, so I don't totally know. I mean, I think they would still need to do a fall, a fall planting as well. For zone five or zone four, you would actually be sowing these poppies in the spring because your summers aren't as unbearable as they are in the Southeast. Okay, the thing is, I live in Zone 7, I've been here 20 years, I can't give verbatim advice for people who live in cold regions. It's simply been too long since I gardened in the north, so I'd recommend finding sources that are more regionally specific for your areas. So, the information that I'm going to share with you about poppies is really for Zones 6 through 8. I just want to be as transparent as possible, give the best advice for people who are living in this kind of mid-Atlantic to southeastern region where gardening is completely different than other parts of the country. So now I want to go through and show you bed by bed what each of the uh, poppy seedlings look like so you can get an idea of how they're going to germinate and then what they're going to look like as they grow throughout the winter season. So we're going to start here in my big foundation bed that is boring as can be right now and that's because it's all been seeded and this is the disadvantage of growing from seed is that you go through a stage where it doesn't look like anything but that's what it does now i actually have quite a few different things going on in here some are self-sown so i'll start with that so this is bachelor button Centuria, that is self-sown. These, I believe these are all Larkspur, and I think that's correct because you see here, when you start to see true leaves, the Larkspur have these kind of little cutouts. Now, adjacent to all of that, you see all this really fine, very soft green, 
that is the poppies. Now, this bed was sewn in December. So we are on December 31st today. And you can see they are, they are really still in the process of germinating. And there's a sort of a green haze across this entire bed. And that is from the poppies. Now, poppies are actually the only thing that I intentionally sewed in here. So all of these other things that are coming up, some are bad. This is vetch. Vetch is bad. Um, but other things like larkspur, I want. Things like bachelor buttons, I definitely want. But all of this is poppy. Now, people often ask about the influence of leaves in the bed. And yeah, obviously you can see where leaves have fallen. The germination rate is lower. And um, that's why I'd recommend waiting to sow your poppy seeds until the leaves have fallen. That's some new advice for this year. Now this bed was sown in November, just a little farther ahead. You can see there's the lettuce and lots of larkspur through the middle. And then all of this back here is poppy. And the poppies, you see, they'll grow out and get much bigger. And people always ask like, do you thin them? And I don't, I am really hands off. And yeah, these are, this is really thick. But what I have found is that the plants will have the capacity to figure out how to grow. And like, you'll get ones that are better established and they'll sort of take over the area. So I don't come through and try and micromanage any of this. And you see, there's all poppies through here. I mean, you could, you could come through and thin, but I don't. So that's, that's my advice. Just let the plants do their own job. <laughs> I feel like if I was a plant, I would tell the gardener, AKA me, to just like stay in your own lane. You can see though, how big they will eventually get. This is usually about the size that they will overwinter. Now we've had crazy mild weather for the last two weeks, but we're going to have normal temperatures starting in just like two days. And here's the thing, these poppies and larkspur, nigella, bachelor buttons, um, all of these cool season things are totally fine. Um, even if they get nipped a little, they will come back. This, this warm up isn't actually that unusual. I've been going through pictures from the last 20 years and we very frequently are out in short sleeves and sundresses in December. And then January, February tends to be a little bit cooler, but don't freak out. You don't need to cover any of this stuff. Um, yeah, like, like just leave the plastic alone. I don't understand um, people's need for micromanaging, I guess is, is what it comes down to. These plants don't need you to do anything, okay? Just sow the seeds and that's all you need to do. Now I'm walking here in the wave because I have a very exciting discovery to show you. Ta-da! There are poppies germinating. Now I sowed this on my normal ideal date, Black Friday, and um, the barley germinated really quickly and I was a little bit concerned because someone had mentioned that barley might actually create a chemical that, that kills off like all of its competition. Because last year I did this and I didn't get any poppies to germinate, but I had bought all those poppies. These are my seeds and I know my seed germinates and I am so pleased to see that I have poppy germination. It's not as much as I had thought it would be, but there are areas with a lot. So you see all these little, tiny little, like little lines. Those are all poppies. And this is barley. That's self-sown mustard. So my dream, hopefully, of having a mixed border of barley and poppies is gonna come true this year. Now this side border I did just a few weeks ago and I'm really excited to show you that I have two things happening here. I've got California poppies, Escholtzia, germinating here, which I had sown all through this border. And they've literally germinated overnight. So that's what this really fine 
sort of silvery leaf is. Now, the Schultzia, California poppy, is much shorter. It only grows to about 24 inches, whereas the other poppies, Papaver somniferum, get much taller. So as you can see, I planted or I seeded those towards the back of the bed, and here all these are germinating. And you can see there's a lot of leaf litter in here, but even underneath the leaves, they are germinating. So I don't really think that you should go to any great length to like blow the leaves if you sown them and leaves fall because this is kind of proving that the poppies will germinate even with leaf litter around them. Now this was the very first bed that I sowed and I actually did this in October. And so there's a big difference in the development of these poppies. You see how big all of these poppies are. So clearly here in Raleigh, you could sow these in mid to late October without any trouble. Now all of these self-sown along the edge, I did not plant. Those are self-sown. Poppies always will grow where the ground is undisturbed. And that means they always want to grow somewhere that you don't necessarily want them. So remember, these are going to be like three to four foot tall. So having them right along the edge isn't really desirable. However, I love them so much that I'm not going to take them out. And this is a really stupid place to have a bunch of poppies, which again, I did not plant. This is my walkway. But as I said yesterday in my garden tour, I'm just going to leave, I'm going to let the poppies have the walkway. That's fine. I don't need the walkway. <laughs> but you could see a big difference in size from self-sown, meaning these seeds fell back in June, stayed in place, and then germinated on their own. So they started growing much earlier than the ones that I've been sowing. And here in this bed, you see more self-sown. In fact, everything in this bed is self-sown because I haven't even done my cleanup yet. And so a lot of larkspur, that's what all of this is. And this is nigella. You see it has a different leaf, it's more, more tall. And then of course, these rosettes are the poppies. Here in this border, this is actually a Schultzia, California poppy that I sowed over a year ago. Those bloomed in the spring. And I sowed more, and I'm just seeing a few seedlings starting to come up right here and here. And I didn't actually sow any Papaver somniferum in this bed. So the poppies that you see, again, are all self-sown. It's again what those big rosettes are. And classically, they love to grow, again, out on the edge, right by the lawn. Often my best poppies will be the ones that come up right along the edge in the Chapel Hill grit. See, there's some more over here. This is just areas where the ground wasn't disturbed. Honestly, I think the trick to the hardest things to grow is just to seed them in your walkways. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's totally accurate. Look at these happy poppies. Some of my biggest poppies are growing in. This is a product called Chapel Hill Grip. It's a local product. It's just a sort of a permeable crushed rock combo with um, local clay. And it compacts really well and it makes a, a good walkway, certainly not a weed-free walkway, but a walkway that's easy enough to maintain. And everything loves to grow in it including things like arugula and daikon radish. Now I haven't checked over here, but let's see, because I scattered a bunch of poppy seeds in all these pots and on the Chapel Hill grit in hopes of just doing some experiments with how they will grow in pots. And yes, I see germination. Now, I didn't do anything to these pots. Look, you can see there's you know, remnants of the tomatoes. All I did was cut the tomato stalks down. I didn't even pull the roots out. Um, they don't all have great germination, but this will be a fun experiment. Look at this one, it has a lot. And I think it'll just be something good for us all to learn together from. 
lots of poppies here and these are just fabric bags filled with my favorite compost soil cube which is available in big bags in the southeast georgia south carolina north carolina and in small bags you can order it in um, the lower 48 states now I still have a whole bunch of poppy seeds to sow and just to make this video complete, I'm going to show you exactly how simple it is. Okay. I'm just going to take a handful. Now, like I said, these are the poppies that I have been growing for 20 years. So I collect the seed. I pre stratify the seed by keeping them refrigerated in these used Telianti ice cream containers. And um, the process is really, I mean, it could not be simpler. So you see, I've, I've got a bed here that doesn't have mulch on it. And I'm literally just gonna take a little handful of seed and then <laughs> I'm just gonna toss the seeds in, just like that. And they should germinate within the next couple of weeks. And this is yet another bed that will have spectacular spring blooms. Again, I'm going to show you from a different angle. Here's the seed. I'm just kind of scattering them within, just like that. Well, I hope you will find this video to be helpful in your seedling identification and ultimately your process for growing out these poppies. I think you still have some time to sow. I usually say between Thanksgiving and New Year's, but today's New Year's Eve. And I have a feeling I'm going to be sowing poppy seeds tomorrow. So, you know, that's the thing. My whole process is really just about experimenting. I try to keep track of dates and times. And I know that there are like ideal windows, but I think you learn a lot, even when you're not successful. So it's not too late to get some poppy seeds and scatter some out so that you can also enjoy the most dynamic spring display that you've probably ever witnessed. And uh, if you found this video to be helpful, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe to the Breathe a Plant Lady YouTube channel so that you'll get regular updates. And I have put this video into the All Things Poppies playlist. So be sure to look at those other videos as well so that you get the full circle. Uh, without a PowerPoint, I sometimes lose track of what I should say in the order I should say it in. So, um, just use these videos as a reference so that um, your, your growing and gardening experience can be as you know, simple and successful as possible. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Hope your poppies are germinating just like mine are.